live. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. We're trying something right now, which we haven't done yet, which is Lynette is in her bug out location. And we are attempting to do this live streaming with um, not the ideal internet setup yet. That's coming, but we'll see how it goes. So just bear with us. If uh, something seems like it's wrong, go ahead and put it in the live feed comments and Carl can check it and make sure everything's good to go. Um, for those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, I take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. We put them up here on a one sheet on my screen. I'm, I will read her the questions and then you'll get a real live organic response. She's not seen any of these questions yet. All right, so Oz asks, do you think an overnight revaluation of precious metals can occur while major banks still hold massive short positions in these metals? Well, actually, I think that by the time the reset happens, that uh, I've, number one, I think it's one of the reasons why they postponed implementing Basel III in uh, Europe. I remember all of that's supposed to come to a head in 2023, whether or not they do or they postpone it. But I don't think at that point that any of those short positions are going to matter much. Uh, we are most likely to see gold respond in the black market versus the official market. So it will be very interesting, but, but keep in mind that by the time they do an overnight revaluation, everything is all screwed up. <laughs> everything is all screwed up. We're in hyperinflation. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna matter if there's shorts against it during that period of time because the banks would already be failing. Every, the whole system, at that point, the whole system's already failing. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Monica M. asks, what is the wealth transfer you always talk about and how will it affect me, she says. Well, the wealth transfer, you know, it, it comes in a number of different, different ways. One way is the inflation because we can see quite clearly now, now it, it's more obvious, but this has always been true because this is by design. The average wage never keeps up with the pace of inflation. And um, so it impacts you in your loss of purchasing power and also in your loss of income and wages, even though the nominal confusion hides that. Uh, so one way that that wealth transfer happens is via inflation in your in and primarily in your wages. And then additionally, the wealth transfer occurs as a crisis evolves and you, the individual, not necessarily you, because obviously I don't know what your circumstances are. But as we saw in 2008, all those people put all of whatever they had plus all their sweat equity into real estate that they then walked away from. And Wall Street, that's really when Wall Street went in and started accumulating single family homes. So that's another way is through crisis where the individuals don't have access to deep pockets like those in Wall Street has. Um, another way would be in the stock market when the stock market plummets. Because what we've seen time and time again historically is that, uh, is that those that understand what's going on, like we can just take Cyprus for example, because that's the graph that popped into my head where you had all of these banks and institutions piling into Cypriot debt because it paid a higher yield. About a year before they actually did the bail-in, so in 2012, while the Cypriots and the normal average Joe stayed inside the system, so it's pretty steady, what we saw were the institutional investors and the banks 
getting out of the Cypriot assets. So what happened was the Cypriots ended up holding the bag. And I think that we see that time and time again with stock market corrections, like what happened in 2008. And uh, so there are a whole bunch of ways that that wealth transfer occurs. And depending upon where you are in your circumstance, like, like for me, since I know that wealth never disappears, it just shifts location. So I have my growth bold that is specifically earmarked. Right now we can see real estate is severely overvalued. At some point, the most likely outcome is that it will be severely undervalued. And because I have my gold, that I, it enables me to hold my purchasing power and then buy that real estate when it is severely undervalued. So whoever bought it at the top and ends up getting rid of it for any reason, either it's a forced liquidation or a chosen liquidation, well, you know, guess what? That's to to those that hold their purchasing power, that's to their advantage. So there are a lot of different ways to transfer wealth for the normal person. Um, most of that happens through inflation and that's absolutely by design. That was really well said. You gave a lot of good examples. I'm sure that communicated very clearly. Um, I can't see the person. Must be this mountain air. What's that? It must be this mountain air. Uh, Jim B asks, why do people think gold is worth so much? You can't eat it. I love that question. The reason why gold is worth so much is because it is used across every single area of the global economy. So it has the broadest base of buyer, the broadest base of functionality, and the broadest base of, of, of um, let's see, buyer functionality and demand. So there is no other financial asset that has that broad range. Additionally, according to the Bank for International Settlements, it is the only, the only financial asset that has no counterparty risk to it. The only one. Plus, it, you know, and, and there are a lot of other reasons why it's been the primary currency and monetary metal for five, 6,000 years. But today, that's why it's worth so much because it has the broadest base of, of utility and the broadest base of buyer that is globally. Yeah, and to address the you can't eat it piece, because I'm assuming you're talking about the barterability, you know, the barterability oh. aspect or, or, you know, needing to have food in a post, you know, poop hit the fan scenario. The, the right. goal of gold and silver would be to hold your purchasing power even, or even, you know, when the poop hits the fan, have some growth in there. Um, but that's why, you know, we're always talking about you want to have food, water, energy, these things in place, because if the poop hits the fan, you're not going to eat it. You're going to go to your food stores first. You're going to go to your water stores first to be able to survive. And the goal of the gold and silver is to hold that, hold your wealth, store your wealth through that transition. So let me just add on to that. That's why it's so important to have an asset that has that broad based demand and is you universally accepted. And by the way, you can eat gold because I have. I'm not sure what the full nutritional value of it is. Couldn't imagine um, not. Couldn't imagine any. <laughs> well, no, actually. Other than because... making your poop shiny. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that on air. Um, but actually, you know, colloidal silver, it has a lot of medicinal qualities. So uh, actually, colloidal gold would too. However, that's not something that you want in your everyday diet. But it is that universal acceptance as a store of value means that you can convert it into. Because are you going to eat, you know, dollar bills? I don't think so. Those don't have any nutritional value either. Uh, and 
they're not universally accepted. And especially when we go to a CBDC, I mean, there's not even anything for you to eat. Valid point. So are you, I'm going to ask you another question, but I got to ask first, are you, are you familiar with what's, go, what's going on with Evergrande Bank in China? I am. I'm going to talk about it next week. Okay. So we have a question from Ben T that asks, how can the looming default of Evergrande Bank in China impact the global real estate market? <laughs> well, you know, the thing is with Evergrande is they weren't just in this little tiny local hamlet. And we do know that globally real estate is, you know, I mean, it's at nosebleed levels and it's not necessarily um, just the real estate market. It's all the banks and all the lendings and all the non-banks because Evergrande became kind of like this octopus that has their hands in a whole bunch of different places. So it isn't just the real estate market, it's much broader than that. And we all know that the whole financial system is incestuously inter intertwined, and that's why it is systemically important and risks not just real estate, but banks, non-banks, funds, you know, like mutual funds, ETF, et cetera. So it's much, much bigger than just real estate. But because they've had access to such cheap money, they were definitely instrumental in propping up the prices of real estate and, and justification. But ever, I'm going to talk more in depth about that next week. Okay, cool. Mike P asks, if gold and silver are going to be the means of trade, what does it really matter if I have bars, rounds, or coins? And why would I want to pay an extra premium for American minted bullion coins versus rounds or foreign coins like Canadian Maple Leafs or Philharmonics? Well, I don't recall ever saying that it was going to be a global means of trade. It is globally accepted as a store of value. And when I look at what happens on a historic basis as far as why would you want one kind of gold or silver versus another kind of gold or silver, one thing that we know for sure is that desperate governments do desperate things and confiscating that gold is one of them and even silver, but I, I don't have the same kind of concerns over silver confiscation because it gets used up in industry versus gold, which is all recoverable. So, you know, first of all, I think the question that you have to determine, because when people say, oh, they would never confiscate it gold again, that, I'm sorry for anybody that feels that way, is really a random opinion that is not supported by history. I can't sit here and tell you one way or the other, whether they will or they will not, but I'm not going back very far or very long to see that governments definitely do desperate things and they definitely do confiscate mm -hmm. gold. So there are different types of both gold and silver that for me, when I look at it historically, perform different functions. So in the strategy that I created initially for myself and that, you know, everybody at ITM, not only are they using it, but they've made it, you know, we've all come together and make it better because there are lots of smart people there. You know, you really want to look at what am I trying to accomplish and what kind of gold or silver is most likely to accomplish that. If I'm going to say pure barterability, then what I want in silver, yeah, I mean, I own rounds, I own, you know, dimes, quarters, all, all that stuff. I don't really care. And you're right. For me, as far as silver is concerned, I'm just really looking for the closest that I can get to spot, even though I know that spot does not reflect its true value. Gold is different for me. And I have to tell you that from my personal experience, 
you know, that's the difference between, I think, me and a lot of other people are the experiences, well, that we've all had in our lifetime. But for me specifically with gold, my Uncle Al had safes full of gold in 1964 when legally you couldn't own more than five ounces. And he had probably at least 3,000 ounces of gold legally because I want to use this gold in the normal marketplace <laughs> so that I can take advantage of that wealth transfer mechanism that we were talking about in a previous question. So, you know, I always ask myself, well, what if I'm right and what if I'm wrong? If I buy bullion gold, even a gold American Eagle, a new thing, or a Canadian Maple Leaf, or, you know, Chinese Panda, I, any of the new bullion gold or bars, right? At the moment, I'm getting it cheaper. Well, the bars anyway, at the moment, I'm getting it cheaper. However, if there is a government, you know, clamp down or a confisca confiscation, I am not going to be able to use it in the normal marketplace. And that is my goal. So since I a hundred bazillion percent know that gold and silver too, both of them, severely undervalued to their, to their true value. And that's how they reset the currency is fiat money. So in the US dollars against gold, right? I'm happy to pay that insurance, that premium. For me, that's an insurance policy that tells me that if they confiscate, I still have gold that I can use in the normal marketplace. I still do. So since I'm already buying it well below the fundamental value, hey, I have health insurance. This is my wealth insurance. And if I'm right or if I'm wrong, it doesn't matter because I'm buying it so cheaply. Did I answer all of those questions? You did. Okay. All right. So let me see. So we'll go to a live question here. Paul S. asks, how can manipulation of the gold and silver market ever stop when it is apparently sanctioned by the U.S. and probably many other governments? <clears throat> it stops when it works for them to stop it. Because what happens as we go into this hyperinflation, and we, we're already seeing this, that the confidence, the, the public is losing confidence. So they will continue to suppress the price because a rising price is an indication of a failing currency. And if people actually understood that the currency was failing, they would make different choices. They would buy, they would buy gold and silver, real money. So they will continue to manipulate it until they need to gain that confidence again and reset the currency, which will probably happen at least three times, but, uh, but I don't know, well, time is gonna tell us that. But um, they will continue to manipulate it until hyperinflation gets so bad that the public confidence is lost, they reset, they do, they do two, three, however many overnight devaluations, and then they take most likely, because this is what history tells us, us a small component of gold or a component of gold and puts it into the new currency, just like Roosevelt at his fireside chat, which if you want a link to that, I have that. And he said, and you can trust the banks again. You can trust the currency again because it's backed by good money. And he was referring to gold. So uh, yeah, they'll continue to manipulate it to, to hide the truth until they no longer can hide the truth. And then they're going to utilize that to regain that confidence. So Rhino Rave asks, do you think they can kick the can down the road 5, 10, 15 plus years with negative rates? No. <laughs> Look around you. Look at the extreme insanity on so many levels. No, I, I don't. I mean, I, this is beyond my control, but in my opinion, um, at best, at best, um, you know, and I, I don't like to put dates on it, 
but they seem to be lining up 2023. Not that they can't postpone things, you know, beyond that, but there's an awful lot of stuff that resets and restructures and has to be completed by 2023. You know, so I, I get in your position, you know, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, shelter, medicine. I mean, these are the things that you need to have in place so that I, I can't tell you that it's going to happen Tuesday morning at 835. I can't tell you for sure it's going to happen in 2023. I hope it doesn't. I seriously hope it doesn't, because the more time we have, as long as you consistently move forward and execute your plan and get yourself into a position that no matter what happens, you and your family and the people that you care about are okay. That's really what we have to be doing. So do I think they can kick it down? No, no. I, I don't see any way on God's green earth that they can postpone this for 10, 15, 20 years. We're at the end and it should be, I'm kind of surprised, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm kind of surprised about that question because I look out there and I go, holy crap, this should be obvious to everybody now. But yeah, no, I don't think they can kick the can down the road 10, 15, 20 years. No. All right, well, that's, a, that's it for the questions today. Do you have anything you want to remind people about? <clears throat> what do you have coming up? Yes, indeed. Wow, it got uh, really bright yes. on your face. Pardon? I said the light got really bright on you. We're, we'll work out all these kinks. We had two in the new one that I saw the studio in my house, and now we'll do it here. But uh, next week, I'm going to be on the Suns podcast with Jay Heck, and he's, he's somebody new. So you know I always like that. But I'm also going to encourage everybody really strongly to go on the behind the scenes and for more information, because I know, are you going to, are you going to put out some of those little secret snippets? There's some surprises that are coming your way, which is why I happen to be up here this week. Um, so I think we'll release some things and you can find that on our Twitter at ITM trading underscore Zang. And again, this would be the time to make sure that you are subscribing so that when something does happen, that you get those notifications if you turn on that bell and we'll let you know when we're going live. But, you know, if you have, this is so time to have your strategy in place. So if you have not yet done that, then I'm going to encourage you. There's a link below to, to the Calendly and, you know, set a time to have a conversation with one of our consultants, because I think you'll find that they're quite bright, extremely capable. We all work together as a team, but you got to have a plan now. I mean, you know, this is not something that I think that you should postpone even for one more minute, honestly, not for one more minute. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you share, 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 because there is seriously no doubt in my mind, but that every single person out there needs to have their assets covered. Here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And you know, they make us an awful lot of promises. They don't want to look over here so we can do this over here. But the reality is, is that financial shields, and if you're in a battle, you want a real metal shield. You don't want promises you, or paper or any of that. And so, you know, this is the foundation of any good strategy going through social, economic, and financial reset globally that we're going through. And so we are going to do another video from the bug out house tomorrow. And until then, please be careful out there. Bye-bye.